Hi, stats people. Uh, I would call you statisticians, but we're not quite there yet. We're getting there, but not quite there. Anywho, um, today's a review day. I'm just going to kind of briefly go over chapter seven and, um, and then I'm going to do two free response problems. And then if I have time to do the, um, the multiple choice that I posted on Dropbox, then I will. But if I don't, uh, then I'll just post the answers on Dropbox for you. Okay, so uh, let's kind of do a brief overview of chapter seven. Okay, so here's my first generalization. Uh, this is a population of all the dogs that exist in my house. <laughs> Anyways, there's some with fat tails, there's some with no tails, and there's some with skinny tails, and there's red ones, and brown ones, and black ones, and pink ones. So, we're gonna first talk about what's the population. Oh, the population is all of the dogs that are at my house, right? Then we also have a sample, and that sample is I randomly select maybe three of my dogs to give dinner tonight because I can't afford to feed all 10 of them. So every day I randomly select um, three dogs to feed. <laughs> okay, I'm really not that mean. Okay, but so we randomly select three of them. Okay, and I randomly select uh, these three. Just, I've put their names in a hat and I mix well and then I draw three names. They have to be equally sized pieces of paper, too. Don't you forget that. So anyways, I have a simple random sample of three dogs. Okay. Now, so my sample is the three dogs that I feed that particular night. Now, then the question is, what's the difference between the parameter and the statistic? The parameter is, okay, say I'm interested in looking at what proportion of my dogs have a fat tail. If I care about the population, my parameter p or pi is the true proportion of dogs with a fat tail. So that's one, one, how do I do this? Highlight. One, two, three out of ten. Okay, so that's my true proportion of dogs with a fat tail. Now, if I'm only interested in the ones that I'm feeding tonight, what proportion of the dogs that I'm feeding tonight have a fat tail? Now that, instead of being p, is p hat, because it's a sample, and it's a statistic that comes from a sample. Remember, s and s, statistic, sample, and parameter, population. So. Uh, my p hat for tonight is just one out of three because I selected three dogs and only one of them has a fat tail. Okay, so that's the difference between my sample and population and parameter and statistic. Okay, knowing those things, those vocab words is super are super important. Okay, um, so overall. After we've done all of this, you know, the vocab in the beginning, then we talked about the difference between, um, <clears throat> oh, we got into sampling distributions, right? But we had two different sections of sampling distributions. The first one was about proportions, and the second one was about means, okay? There are different conditions for each, and there are different conclusions for each. So we're going to go over that real quick. Okay, so for, portion, for proportions, that is strictly categorical data, okay? So the proportion of dogs with a fat tail, or the proportion of dogs that are brown, or the proportion of orange M&Ms that fall out of a candy machine. Those are all things that underlie under categorical data, and so we can only do proportions with them. We can't find the mean of fat-tailed dogs. That's weird. 
So anyways, we're going to do the proportions, and proportions is only for categorical data. Means is for quantitative. Just notation-wise, right, proportions, you have p and p hat and pi. Means, you have x bar, mu, etc. Okay, so let's just write those down so we can tell the difference between these two things. Okay, so in both cases, we could have a parent population. And the parent population could be approximately normal, it could be skewed, it could be bimodal, it could be really funky business, um, or not. Okay, and so um, the reason that we want to know about sampling distributions is because eventually we're going to go to data where we don't know anything about the population and all we have is our sample. So for now we're just kind of looking at the relationship between the sample and um, the population distributions. Okay, so in both cases we have a population distribution, doesn't matter what it looks like. Okay, so there are two parent populations. Um, I just drew them as normal in this case, just because. Um, but for proportions, right, your mean, this is back from chapter 6 when we did the binomial distribution, but your mean is uh, your expected value. Um, so if you roll a die six times, um, your expected value, right, of getting a 3 is the probability of getting a 3, which is 1 out of 6, times 6. Right, so your mean would be 1, 6 times 1 over 6. And then your standard deviation is the square root of n times p times 1 minus p, which is all in your handy dandy packet, which I don't have with me, otherwise I'd show it to you. Packet. Your um, means, your population distribution of your means, you're going to have some sort of mean mu, and you're going to have some sort of standard deviation sigma. Then if you take a sample of size n, you, you get um, a proportion p hat of that particular sample. Or if we're talking quantitative data, you get some mean x bar of that particular sample. Okay, You take lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of samples, um, and then eventually you get your sampling distribution of uh, p hat and of x bar. Okay, so you got it. We take lots of p hats from each of our samples and we make our distribution um, <clears throat> with mean p and standard deviation p times 1 minus p over n square rooted. Same thing with quantitative data. Um, we have the, um, if we take many samples and we take the means of them and then plot the means on a distribution, um, we look at the mean of the means is, <laughs> the mean of the means is the same as the mean of the population. And that, that's not confusing, um, which I actually didn't write down. And um, your standard deviation of sig is sigma over root n. Now, here's the kicker. Right? This is when the conditions fall into place because if you don't have the conditions satisfied, then these particular um, distributions are not necessarily going to be normal and they're not necessarily going to have the mean and the standard deviation that we have, that I have written down right there. Okay, So you have to have those conditions satisfied. So I'll write those down. Okay, so if you're with categorical data and proportions, then you have this scenario if n is less than or equal to 10% of the population size and n times p is greater than or equal to 10, as well as n times 1 minus p. Okay, so your probability of success and prob or sorry, your um, expected value of success and expected value of failure have to be greater than or equal to 10. And then you get this nice normal curve with the mean and standard deviation as expected. Now if you're in quantitative data, very very similar scenarios, right, you still want to check is my sample less than or equal to 10% of the population and is my sample large enough, okay, and so 
number two checks that. So either n is greater than or equal to 30, or the population was approximately normal to start, and so it doesn't matter what size your sample is. Voila! And that is chapter seven in a nutshell. So now I'm going to do a couple examples for you. All right, so read this example real quick. Try it on your own first, and then I'll walk through it for you. All right, so important information in this problem is that our average uh, population is claimed to be 40 pounds, standard deviation 1.5 pounds, um, and that the weights are approximately normally distributed. Okay, um, determine the, probably the mean weight. The other thing is, in part A, it's really important that we're looking at the mean, which means we should be calculating from the um, sampling distribution of the means of x bar. Now it does say assume all necessary conditions are met. Um, all you need to check is n less than or equal to 10% of the population size and is n is your sample size greater than or equal to 30. Um, or okay but it's normally distributed so yes our conditions are met anyways. Alright so here's my sampling distribution. Mean is uh, 40, standard deviation is 1.5 over root n, and we want to know what's the probability um, of selecting, randomly selecting uh, 12 bags with 39 pounds or less. All right, so I use my calculator to figure out the probability that my, um, the probability of getting a mean of less than 39 pounds. So I'll calculate that. And come back. Alright, so in my calculator I just figured out the probability of this happening and I found out that it's about 1%, which is a very, very tiny percent. So my shading is very poor. I did a bad job predicting. Alright, so let's move on to B. So if you happen to buy 12 bags that weighed 39 pounds, um, yes, you'd be suspicious of uh, their mean was, was 39 pounds. Um, you would definitely be suspicious of the company's claim because the probability of that happening randomly is 1%. And so that's not really good, right? So you'd think that the, the claim of the company was bad, um, so they, they did a bad job. They hired a bad statistician. All right, let's move on to 11. All right, so 11 is about an opinion poll in Texas, which will be fun. Um, and uh, so we're looking at proportions, right? An opinion, all we can get are proportions. We can't take means of opinions, okay? So um, they ask us to check the normal approximation. All we need is the n less than or equal to 10% uh, of the population, and we also need to check np, n times 1 minus p are both greater than or equal to 10. So let's do that real quick. All right, is 500 less than or equal to 10% the population of Texas? Yeah, there's likely more than 5,000 adults in Texas. Okay, and then for the NP and N times 1 minus P, we get 225 and 275. Both of those have to be greater than or equal to 10, which is good. So we have correctly and accurately checked both of our conditions. Let's look at B. What's the probability that more than half of the adults in the sample Keyword in the sample, okay? So that means we're looking at the sampling distribution, not the population distribution. How many are in favor? Show your work. All right. All right, so I've officially drawn my uh, sampling distribution with a mean of 0.45, same as the population. And then the sigma, the standard deviation, was p times 1 minus p over n, which is uh, approximately 0 0.0222. Um, and so then we want to know what's the probability that more than half of the adults are um, in the sample are in favor. So we want to know what's the probability of 50% or more. So either using the z-score and the z-score uh, table or my calculator normal CDF, I find that um, the likelihood of this happening, of getting 0.5 or more in the sample, um, is about 1%, so very unlikely. Um, and I think that's it. Have a nice evening or day. Bye!